Hey guys, want to find out how I went from this to this with one bottle of color? Stay tuned. Okay, so I can actually thank my mother for <laughs> helping me to develop this technique. I'm not sure, um, you know, it, somebody could have already done this before. The world is big, you know. Um, so when I say it's my new technique, it's just a technique that I haven't seen anyone use before, um, that I thought I developed myself. So no shade to anybody who might've already done this. You know how it goes. So anyway, um, for this look, I have one bottle of African violet dye from a door that my mom got for me at the store. <laughs> Um, so basically what I'm going to do is go through and as you can see, I am dry brushing this on and anytime I'm working in the front of the wig, I'm literally just putting the color right on the bristles of the brush and just very gently tapping that in. Um... And then what I do is I work the color through the top of the hair and I spray it with my water bottle. Now I'm using warm water in this bottle, um, but once my water got cold, I didn't notice any difference in the results. So you're just gonna go in small sections, put that color directly on, and just like I'm doing, you're just gonna kind of dry brush that through. And once you have that going, um, enough to just kind of have a little bit of color on the hair. You're going to go ahead and saturate it with your water bottle and you are going to go on ahead and smooth that color in. So we're going to do that all over the head and I'm going to leave in a large amount of these clips because I feel like it might actually help you guys. Um, especially if somebody's trying to do this color along with me. So this will work well for any hair that's lighter than the color um, that you're going with. In my case, um, I started off with a powder blue and then over time it kind of turned into a really nice ashy silver, um, which was a great base for this color. Um, but I do want you guys to keep in mind the color wheel. So with that being said, if your hair, um, the hair that you're using is a more golden blonde, you want to go ahead and um, try to tone some of that yellow out um, and get it as close to bluish or purplish or silverish as you can. And that way it'll actually hold on to this color. Um, but either way, I've used this technique for another wig of mine, and it doesn't matter what color you're using, it still works. Um, just take your time, go through it, and you're going to see as I um, move up towards the front, look at her, look at her, Bethany is just all over the place, won't keep her head still. <laughs> But as I'm moving closer to the front, I'm actually going to leave just a little bit of area um, in the root of this silvery color. And that is actually going to give me a perfectly clean root. So just go ahead and watch as we go through.
All right, guys, so at this point, I'm primarily um, working on all the hair that's not on the frontal, just because that's going to take a little bit more time. Y'all, she was so difficult to work with. It's like, come on, girl, get your head right. Get your head right. I was about to slap her back over her head like I was her mother. <laughs> like, I don't have control of this mannequin. <laughs> All right, now this is where we get to the, the meat and potatoes of this. Because I feel like the back part, obviously, you can kind of just slap it on. Um, you know, as long as you're not too free wielding with your color. <laughs> um, but in order to get those really clean parts and everything else like that, um, you're going to put it on your brush. And you want to just kind of feather that through. And be very careful when you're spraying your water at this point. Um, as you're doing the roots with the dry brush, um, you don't want to overly saturate the hair at the top. So just make sure you leave yourself enough color. Um, by the time I got to the top of the head, I had one third of um, a bottle of color. And I would say, I believe the bottle is four ounces. Um, so, you know, don't go crazy with it. This wig is about, um, it started off as 22. I've cut it now, probably about an 18 inch. Um, so one bottle works fine. I would say um, the other wig that I colored like this is like a 30 inch wig. And for that one, I used two bottles. So, um, you know, I would say one bottle per every, you know, 15 to 18 inches. <laughs> I don't know if I could um, stretch a vivid co color like this all the way through. Okay, and the key to this, guys, is making sure you work this through. So make sure you rub this color through. Make sure you don't let it dry out um, completely. You just basically want to keep that moisture in um, as long as you can, and that'll make sure all those strands are getting taken care of. When it comes to my baby hairs, I'm actually just gently using that brush to brush them forward. And you want to keep this brush as dry as possible when you are working near the roots. Don't go in with a whole bunch of color um, to your roots because it will go onto your lace. So just make sure you keep that, that brush dry. If you have to go in a few times to, you know, kind of tap, 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 <laughs> that's what you want to do. And that includes your baby hairs. When you're working on the baby hairs, you want that, that brush to be dry. Um, no gloppy color. And that way you can kind of just brush the hairs down um and have the color transfer and then we can do a light misting of water and just comb it through and that will keep those roots clean um so here i'm going to show you guys a little closer and just look how clean that part area is it's everything so i'm just going in tapping that color in like i said and um you only want to use a very little bit for this section and kind of just go through and work it through with your hands. When you're no longer near the roots, you can go ahead and apply it on. And be careful of your little fingers. It's almost messed up my own wig with my big old fluffy fingers right up on the lace. <laughs> but now I got a little bit of extra color in the bottle, so I'm just going through in any areas that, um, you know, look a little patchy or I'm not really sure about and kind of just putting a little bit more of that color in, but it came out so good, so clean, and the lace, just how clean the lace looked and how great this parting looks, 
is enough to make this my new technique. All right, look at this freaking color, you guys. <laughs> and this hair is still so soft and beautiful. It's unbelievable. So I'm just going to go ahead and use my, um, I think this is a one inch, one and a half inch, maybe curling iron. Um, I got this from Amazon. It is on my affiliate list. And, um, you guys, I learned how to do my own hand tattoos. So it's not a real tattoo. It's one of those henna tattoos. I was planning on showing you guys how to do it on some videos. So if you're interested, um, let me know. If you're not interested, I'm going to do it anyway. Um, <laughs> and maybe you'll get interested once you see um, me post a video and everything. But I'm really, really excited about it. Um, so I've always loved henna hand tattoos. Okay, so I'm just going in and um, curling the hair. And as you can see, um, the front curl I'm doing towards the face. The other curls, I'm actually kind of curling down, but the hair is kind of directed away from the face. So I'm just going to go over the whole head like this. And this color came out so even. It came out so freaking pretty. When I tell you guys, this hair literally stops traffic. Like I step outside and you hear, excuse somebody is stopping somewhere to be like oh what is going on over here this old lady clutched her pearls i thought it was the funniest thing on on earth like i've never seen a person literally clutch their pearls in front of me but she did honey she clutched her pearls and i knew my job was done correctly like if that old lady was scandalized like that <laughs> So yeah, I'm just going through and um, I'm not like really holding these curls like that because I want them to be kind of loose and airy. Um, I just wanted a nice fluffy kind of shaggy <laughs> look for this hair. Um, I don't want it to look too done. All right, so I wanted to show you guys how I'm going to curl this bang area back. Um... So I'm going to be over directing the hair opposite the direction I want it to go in and I'm just going to pin it back and that'll give me kind of a nice fluffy curtain bang type of look. Um, because I wound up pinning the curls and I actually um, left the wig for like two days before I put it on. I was so busy. It came out a little tighter than I wanted, but you'll see on the final picture how I got my nice little, you know, shaggy swoop situation once um, the curls dropped. All right, so let's put this bad boy on. We got our alcohol. I'm gonna go around my hairline. Um, so you guys will notice I'm not gonna wear a stocking cap. I have been having issues with my edges thinning and I believe my issue is from the cornrow and the stocking caps, like the tension of having the stocking cap around my hairline. So I never lose any hair when I am removing my glue. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put my adhesive on. And um, I just did my hair in two braids and pinned them in the back. So if you have thinner hair, um, this technique might work for you. But yeah, I, I noticed my hair was only thinning in the areas where the stocking cap is. It's like not even the adhesive. It's just the stocking cap. So I'm going to give it a shot. See if it helps to grow that hair back in. And um, I'm using the Even Mega Hold today. That's my favorite glue. All right, let's put her on. Our lace is clean as a baby's bottom. And look at that part. And mind you, I don't have on no stocking cap. I haven't put on any makeup on this wig yet. I haven't done anything. Um, but that part, she clean. She living her life right. She's been baptized in the blood of the Lord. Look at her. 
I'm stupid. Look at that. <laughs> All right. So we're just going to go ahead and lay down this extra lace. And, um, you know, like I told y'all before, it's going to be down a little bit. But if you don't like that, then on your forehead, you put yours back a little bit. You see, if you think I look ridiculous, you just push yours back and then there you go. You will look better. You will notice my mouth open quite a bit in this video. Um, it's nothing I can do about it now. <laughs> so I'm just going in with my comb and laying that down. And um, this is that wig from I Today Hair. Y'all, this is literally the best 613 wig that I have gotten in so long. Like the hair stayed really, really soft. It colored really, really well. And this is 613 hair that I don't even have to wrap up at night or anything. Like I literally put this hair in a bun while I'm sleeping and I wake up and it looks amazing. Like it doesn't shed all over the place. It's not dry. It's literally everything. Thanks for watching. Catch you next time. Bye.